there are about 12 works in this next section called Architecture. And to my immediate right is a piece by Christina Woodruff. And it, it, it kind of represents the essence of a number of different things. She's a California artist. She is by day actually a computer programmer, not, not a sophisticated computer programmer, but a, but a kind of repeated activity kind of programmer because that's what occupies her mind. And yet when she turns to art, she creates some really lovely things, mostly in watercolor. In this particular case, these, these buildings are, uh, are everything an outsider piece should be. They're not studied pieces of architecture. They're not very carefully delineated like an architectural drawing would be, but rather they have just enough to create a sense of mass in the building, to give you height. The very simple line work gives you the sense of how many stories these things have. And then interestingly enough, as a building creates a shadow, which is a normal thing for a building to do, the shadows in Christina's work take on a, a big physical presence. Uh, again, that's a kind of an immediate reaction to what is a relatively subtle compositional issue. The other piece of architecture here is, a, is done by a workshop group in Texas, and this is called Skyscraper. And this was done by a, by a group of artists working together using found objects to create their piece. This object actually has uh, uh, some razor blade pieces on it. It's also made up of, of cracker boxes, the plastic containers that crackers come in. It's got some masking tape, some packing tape. It's got a little sort of, uh, sort of ice cream plastic scoop at the top that kind of makes the dome. And it's on a pretty beat up piece of wood. And yet, at its essence, it has everything that an architectural model would have. It just doesn't happen to be finished or refined in a sort of classical kind of terms. So again, it sort of carries the essence of these things in, in, a, in a very sort of, again, primitive, simple kind of way. The other piece to see in this architecture show is this tent created by California artist Jesse Donahue. Jesse's work is made up of these plastic bags, the very common bags that we use for carrying items from a store. Jesse, who's, who's both deaf and blind, has actually sewn these together. If you take a close look, you'll see that's really an extraordinary sewing job. He uses this, uh, hanging it from a tree, uses it as a, as a, as a shelter, basically. Uh, and it really has kind of an extraordinary presence for being something so simple and so well accomplished. This landscape section shows several elements about outsider art that are particularly interesting. In the work to my right by Heidi Hennessy, it's a village in a storm. You see the sky has a really kind of dramatic element to it. If you think even to Van Gogh's work, to Starry Night, a fairly famous picture, he turned his sky into something very dramatic, as important as the landscape below it. And Heidi's done that same kind of thing. For many of these artists, the sky is not a, a quiet, intangible place. It's a very active area where things happen. And so that approaching storm takes on a very physical kind of quality in Heidi's work. In the work to my left, which is by Danny Williams, uh, as well as the work on the other side by Christina Woodruff. These artists are creating, again, a kind of a landscape scene, and yet in each of them it's important for them to divide the landscape into horizontal bands. It's a kind of an imposed geometric structure that, that many of these artists often find sort of comfort in that kind of geometry. And so you see this banding fairly obvious throughout this work and certainly in, in Christina Woodruff's piece as well. These artists, as, you'll, as you've learned in the sign area already and see throughout the exhibit, are not afraid to put words and letters into places where normally you wouldn't put words and letters. So in Christina Woodruff's piece called El Nino, El Nino, not a subtle title down at the bottom suddenly becomes a very dramatic part of again the very dramatic sky that appears in her piece. At the far side here is a work by Jose Del Rio called Peace Garden and it represents another thing that many outsider artists do. They are not skilled at proportions about how things recede in space perspective and, and, and shouldn't be because again they're not trained to do so. Their immediate reaction is to simply draw those things in the environment that are important to them. So something like this fountain in the Peace Garden that is 
further back from the foreground still has a very strong presence because in the artist's mind, that's a very important piece of this peace garden. So it takes, different from a photographic reality, a stronger part of the picture.